afternoon. Thank y'all for being here today. It's an exciting time for us. Uh, new year, uh, new team. Uh, we're uh, you know we're we're different. Um, we've got uh, four senior guards returning uh, this year that uh, I think you're going to. Uh, obviously, they're going to be really good for us. Unfortunately, they all play the same position, so it makes it hard to play them all at the same time. Uh, there is a combination where you might see them on the floor together, but uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, they're all they're all kind of locked in. Three of them are kind of locked in at the same spot, so it'd be difficult to play them together. You're probably going to see three of them together a lot, um, but uh, you know, we're we're uh, we've been working at it. We've had 14 practices. We'll have a maroon white tonight. Um, you know, it's not going to look very good. We're we're we're, we're a long way from. Uh, where we need to be, but I mean that's that's part of it. Um, we're uh, we've got some new kids, some new you know five new players, four freshmen, and a junior college player. They're really trying to learn the speed of the game. Uh, a couple of those kids are going to have to play some meaningful minutes for us. Uh, we'll have some other uh, young players that um, you know haven't played a lot of meaningful minutes in their career. They're going to be thrown into the fire. Uh, Misha. Williams, just one of them, that's going to, uh, you know, she's going to have to play a lot for us and play two different positions, which really makes it difficult for a young player that hasn't played a lot. Hard enough to learn the one, <clears throat> then you learn two positions really can be a challenge. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, we've already had a, a pretty significant injury with Iggy, and uh, we've lost her for the season. She'll have uh, uh, surgery tomorrow morning, and so uh, that's a, that's a, Fairly significant blow for us uh, in that she probably was going to have a chance to start at the three. She's a big guard. Uh, we don't have a lot of big guards on our team. We have a lot of guards and good players, but not a lot of big guards. Um, and that gave you some size and athleticism that can match up with some of these, um, you know, players we're going to see throughout the course of the year that have size and that can play. So, uh, but you know, if, if we probably had a uh, you know, a position where we had some some depth. Um, you know, I, I guess guard would be it. I just hate it for Iggy. She works extremely hard to get where she was. Worked harder probably than anybody. She's in the best shape of anybody on our team. Was winning all the all the races, uh, all the all the conditioning, um, and has spent a lot of time getting ready for this season. So, just extremely heartbroken for her. Um, it's it's it's. It's really tough, but uh, you know she'll come back bigger, stronger, faster, quicker, and um, I know Dr. Lynn will do a great job with her. So we're uh, glad we've had that happen probably a couple of weeks ago. So uh, other than that, um, you know we, we'll play tonight. We'll have an exhibition this Saturday, uh, closed door scrimmage. Um, the following week we'll have a, our first official exhibition uh, to the public on uh, on Friday night. Before we play UMass, and then uh, a week from that, we open with a, a really good Virginia team with four starters back. So um, it's here, uh, and we, we've got a lot of work to do in a short period of time. Hey, Vic, you had mentioned that uh, Iggy would have been helpful at the four position, even um, without her. How do you feel about that position? Well, I, I, uh, Iggy was going to be a player that not only was going to be a big guard for me, but she could swing to the four and be a maybe a smaller, more athletic, quicker player than a lot of people's fours. But energy-wise, was going to going to wear you out. And so, I, I, I uh, again, that, having a player that can play two positions when you lose that—that's depth at two spots. So, it's a big blow for us. I'm, I'm you know, I didn't. That's a tough one, you know, to get over. Number one, that you don't want to. Eat. That kid has worked extremely hard, and uh, it's devastating to her. It's devastating to me. I don't have these types of injuries, y'all. Uh, with on our program, our program, I've had, I think, in 33 years of coaching, either as a head coach or assistant, I've maybe seen six. So this isn't something that I'm accustomed to seeing or dealing with. Uh, maybe as a head coach, it's. It's obviously our first year, but maybe only my second one in, in uh, 13 years. So it's extremely uh, disheartening, to say the least. Uh, you mentioned a few weeks ago about the 
the four position, those girls competing there. What, what's your what's the outlook there now after several practices and heading into the season? Well, I mean, you've got Chloe, you've got Amisha, uh, and you've got uh, Jonica right now, you know, all competing there. Uh, Amisha needs to play some five for me. Um, you know, I, I think you play Amisha and T together where you can, you've got some size and length, can create some problems. The problem is, is that you can't afford to get either one of those in foul trouble. And, uh, um, and so you have to pick and choose your spots when you do play them together. Um, and so that brings in, you know, uh, Chloe has really come in. Her, her skill set is, is really good, especially for her age. Again, she's learning the speed of the game and dealing with some of the athleticism that you have to deal with at four. The faster she can get acclimated to that, the better off we're all going to be on our team because skill set wise, she's. She's really, really solid. Got great, you know, got a great shot. Uh, smart, heady, runs the floor well. Um, uh, just as a basketball player, and I'm really, really excited about her. Again, just got to get her accustomed to the athletic piece that she's going to have to deal with, uh, you know, with our team and, and the teams that we play against. Uh, what's the expectation for the way Maya Taylor could possibly help this team this year? Well, Maya, you know, she's really come in and, and, and hadn't blinked an eye. I mean, she's, she's a competitor. Uh, I love that kid's um, presence. I love her. She's a great teammate. Um, you know, she, she's a basketball player. She's got a tremendous IQ for the game. Uh, work ethic is incredible. Um, she's going to be a superstar for us. Uh, now she's competing with Jazz and Morgan right now, and, and so that's a that's a, a, a threesome there that are really really special. You know, at point, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people are just like that too. We we're blessed to have three. So the challenge again, I think that's going to be a weekly battle, as is a lot of our spots right now. We're you guys don't get accustomed to seeing the same lineup out there every night because I promise you it's going to change. Uh, uh, I've just got some balance at, some, at certain spots and I'm going to let those kids compete and battle it out every week. Uh, knowing that whoever's hot, that's maybe who gets the nod to start. But the other one coming off, they're coming off hungry um, and more than, than capable. So, uh, you know, a lot like how we ended the year last year, I think we've got some combination, especially with, you know, Victoria, Blair, and Rowe. Those three, those are all two guards. Now, I can play Mo and Blair with Victoria. I can play Mo and Blair together like I did last year in the NCAA tournament. We're just not quite as big at guard. I'm, I'm, we're a little bit more, we're a little smaller. But here's the bottom line right now as we stand here today. Rashana Johnson is my best rebounder offensively. Uh, which is a problem when I'm dealing with Victoria because Victoria should be. But right now in 14 practices, um, Roshanna Johnson's gone to the boards and done more rebounding than uh, any of our other guards. So um, we've got some depth there, and uh, that's going to allow those kids to really be good. Uh, and those kids don't care who starts. They just care about winning. And so I, I love that about them. I love their unselfishness. Um, and their chemistry is really good. You put any of those three together on the floor with Jazz and Morgan and Maya, they find each other on the perimeter when they're we're running the break. I mean, it, you know, I watch them and, and we're towing the line, shooting the three in transition. And I'm, you know, part of me is wanting to go get a layup, and the other part's going, well, you know what, that's a pretty good shot for that kid. You know, Blair and Rowe are as good out there as they are going in for a layup that's contested. So, whereas I'd like Victoria to go in there and, and uh, and really attack the rim because she has size. You can't get to her. So uh, it's really fun to watch those kids when we get up and down a little bit, the chemistry that they have with each other. Again, I think that's the beauty of having those four senior guards. Then you throw Jazz in there, who's, she may be, y'all always want to talk about how improved Tierra is, and Tierra's even more improved today than she was this time last year. But Jasmine Holmes has probably improved as much or more than anybody on our basketball team. She and 
Morgan are really pushing each other along with Maya every day, every day. With Jordan and Jonica having gone through this league before, how much is that going to benefit them when they get ready to play? Well, you know, I think both of Jordan's been through the league one one time, and then uh, I don't know that she went through the league the second time. Jonica went through the league, I think, only one or two games. So I don't know how much, you know, that will play into it. Jordan is, uh, man, she is really athletic. <laughs> She's a tremendous athlete. and. Uh, getting better and better every day. Um, obviously, I think now with the injury uh, with Iggy, I think that really uh, Jordan kind of gets now. She's in our, our future picture this year. Uh, we had hoped maybe hold her out, but I, I think now I think the best thing for her and for our team is we'll, we'll get her ready to go on uh, December 10th. So, again, somebody that really fits what we do. She's a tremendous defender, uh, on ball, off ball. But, man, when she wants to get herself to the rim, you can't do anything about it. And uh, we can get that jump shot to get some consistency. She's somebody who can really be tough to handle. Remember recruiting a kid as Gatorade Player of the Year in, in uh, Arkansas, just knowing what the potential was for her. And now I see it every day. It's, it's quite phenomenal. Hey, Coach. In the back. Hey. <laughs> You've leaned heavily on your seniors in, in recent years, especially last year's group. How have you seen Tory, Morgan, Blair, just that senior class this year sort of develop and become leaders for this team this year? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think those four kids, Rashonda Johnson being the other one, I think those four bring it every day. Um, you know, I, I've, I've said this to y'all before, you know, leadership and maturity are either going to be what make us or break us this year. If we have leadership, we have servant leaders. If we have that and we have maturity, we're going to be fine. Just because you're 22 years old and you've been playing basketball 10 years doesn't make you a mature basketball player. So I, I think that piece is critical right now. Uh, the servant leader and the maturity, again, that doesn't say anything about somebody's jump shot. Those four seniors, I need them to continue to do what they're doing on the court, but I need them to do more off the court. And I think that will really show uh, and pay dividends for our team and our program if we can get them to do that. Um, those kids all are wonderful, wonderful young ladies. They make great grades. Um, they represent us well in the community. Um, so, I mean, I, I, you know how it is. If you've got your own kids, you want more. Uh, I want more. Uh, I, I need more from them. So I think that's going to be a big key for us with them. Hey, Coach, what are the expectations for Tierra on the offensive end this season? Well, I mean, she shot, you know, I think she's a 60, shot 60 some percent a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, she's, uh, she's somebody I'd love to be able to, you know, go through, run my offense through, and, uh, you know, have her touch the ball quite a bit. She shot 53% in her career, uh, 57 last year. So, you know, I think offensively she's really shown that she can make some baskets uh, and score the ball for us just this year. She's worked hard in the offseason with Coach Harris, um, and she's developed. And she's, she's better today, y'all, than she was a year ago. Everybody a year ago wanted to know if she could make a layup. Well, I think she proved she can, she can do that and a bunch more. Um, and she's been really good when we've got her the ball one-on-one -on -one in, in situations on the floor. Uh, she's been able to finish. I think you saw last year when teams tried to double her, she's a great passer. She sees the floor extremely well. She finds her teammates. So, um, you know, I'm, ex I'm excited for Tierra. And, and uh, again, the challenge for me is going to, I got to get 30 minutes a night out of her. I got to keep her out of foul trouble. And I got to keep her playing hard. You know, you take that two headed monster we had a year ago with her and Chinway, what they average points and rebounds together. Well, now I've got her and I've got a sophomore who hasn't played a whole lot in Amisha trying to fill that role, and Zion, who's played probably even less than Amisha, who's a redshirt sophomore. And so we've got to, you know what, we've got to develop those kids. Uh, Amisha's going to play. And that's the thing with Amisha, she's got to understand, you're going to play, baby. You're either going to play four or you're going to play five. So 
we got to get her ready. That's our job as coaches. We've got to get these kids ready. It doesn't matter what their history is. It doesn't matter how much they've played. It doesn't matter what their stat line's been. We've got to get them ready to play. Our expectation is to win. And to do that, we've got to get some, some, some young kids ready that haven't played a lot. Hey, Coach. Hey. Apologize that this was asked earlier, but kind of how do you make that transition from a really, really good program to now a national brand after all the exposure last year? Well, I, I don't want to lose the really, really good program piece. I want to continue to be that really, really good program. I think our brand at Mississippi State has grown exponentially. Just in the five years that I've been here, going on year six, yes, women's basketball, we've grown, and, and so I hope we've helped that brand. But when football's got the number one team in the country five straight weeks and the ESPN truck's rolling by my office every Monday morning to go over there, that helps your brand. And, and so I, I think when you look at a, a lot of our programs here, track and field is always in the top 15, top 12, top 10. Baseball, you, you've got a lot of people that are really um, exposing and, and promoting our brand. That women's basketball could help in that. Hey, that's my job. I told you know I told Scott when he hired me. Hey, you give me an opportunity, I, I won't let you down. And, and I've continued that with with Coach Cohen. Just we we're, we're, we know what we're doing. You know my staff. My staff is so good. Uh, they work extremely hard. We take great pride in the product that we have. Um, nobody's going to outwork us. And I think when you have those, that is a collective. Uh, ingredient and you, and, and you work, you help expose the brand, which is Mississippi State University. So, you know, women's basketball, I think we've been on the lips and the tongue of people now for three years. You know, 27, 28, 34 wins, um, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of winning. And so I, I think that's allowed us to be, um, to become where we are today. Now again, I've told you all before, the only thing harder than building it is keeping it there, and, and that's our challenge. But that's our expectation. This is kind of along those same lines, Coach. We've heard other coaches say before that probably one of the biggest challenges for a coach is dealing with success and with the team having achieved more success last year than any team in history. Has that changed any kind of message or anything in practice? Has that changed anything that you do whatsoever with them to maintain that? It doesn't. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably coaching this team right now harder than I coached last year's team. Last year's team, you know, we had eight juniors and seniors, and they could kind of run themselves in drills, and they held each other accountable, and um, that was a special group. But this year's team, because of the youth on the back end with, with five new faces, two juniors, uh, two sophomores, of uh, which now one's not playing and one is, and she's going to have to play a big role. Um, you know, our two juniors and you know, three juniors with Jonica in the mix with Tierra and Jazz. Um, it, 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 my expectation hasn't changed. It'd be easy all for me to sit up and go, oh man, Whew, we lost four seniors, you know, they won 111 games and, uh, you know, you can't replace that and, um, and all that. And you know what, that's all true, but you can replace it. If we're doing our job in recruiting, we've already, those kids are here. You know what? Uh, it doesn't change my expectation. We're still going to try to coach and win basketball games. Um, we're still going to coach and try to win an SEC championship. It's hard to do what we've done over the last few years, but I'm no different today than I was last year, the year before, the year before. Uh, neither is my staff. We're, we're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep working. We're going to keep trying to be the best we can be and, and keep Mississippi State where it's supposed to be, and uh, and that's our job. And so, uh, you know, our expectations again, our expectations are to win. I've got 15 players. One's hurt. I've had another one hurt. has been out for almost a month now, but we'll get her back. But we got basketball players on our team, so we got to go coach them and teach them and, and get them ready to play. Um, when you say that you don't have a starting five, what characteristics or what talent um, that you're really trying to specify when you're looking for that starting five? 
Well, I think <clears throat> you have to, you know, Tierra McCown, I'll give you an example. Tierra McCown could easily have been inserted into our starting five midway through the conference last year. She had earned it. She was playing better than Chen Wei. Um, but at that point in the year, if I take her and put her in the starting five, she doesn't win sixth player of the year in, our, in the SEC. So I kept her there coming off the bench. So once we got in the NCAA tournament, she started. She had earned it. Uh, and that's where I'm at with the starting five. You want to run through that tunnel. You want to run through the fire. You want to run out there when everybody's on their feet clapping. You've got to earn that right. And uh, uh, if, it's, if it's something that you take for granted, I've got other players and I can get your attention with it. And so I think more than anything for me, it's, it's earning the right to be in that environment, to have your name called. Uh, and again, as I've said, I don't recommend it, you know, what we did in the NCAA tournament, but at the end of the day, our job sometimes, you know, for the most part is it exceeds basketball. And we've got to teach these kids for life and uh, some life lessons. And so, uh, to me, it's about working hard, earning the right to be in that, in that lineup. Well, this is a team with a lot of depth, but there's only so many minutes in the game. Do you kind of have an idea, of, I guess, how many players you're going to have in your main rotation yet? Um, an ideal number of players you want to play every game, that sort of thing. I don't really have one yet. I think you, you know, we've got some, you know, part of our depth is four freshmen, and that's always hard um, for them. Remember, this class that we just graduated, when they were freshmen, they only won five games in the SEC. Now they had to play. Dominique, Katara, Bree, they all had to play as freshmen. Chinway didn't play as a freshman; she was ineligible. And so, um, you know, it's hard to function in this league with freshmen. Um, and, and so it's, uh, for me right now, the reason we probably don't look real good and we're not going to look good tonight until I bring them all together and we go against the guys team for a couple quarters is because I do have them divided up. And I haven't put all the good ones against, uh, you know, this other group over here. And, and, you know, my top five, what I might think are my – Returners, all the returners against all the rookies. Well, that ain't fair. They're going to look really good, and they're probably not going to look real good. So, um, I think for us right now, we've got a, we've got one more night tonight. I'll uh, probably tomorrow and Friday start putting together uh, some rotations that I think can function on Saturday against Florida State in our closed door exhibition, and uh, then that next week we'll start putting those kids together even more and more. Our depth. While on paper it looks like we got a lot, it, it's not as much as I had a year ago. And, and that's a little concerning to me. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Praise the Lord. Go, Doc.